Hey guys, welcome to Homesteading Through Our Eyes. Today we're going to talk about our one week experience in the yurt. So we've really gotten to understand what living in a yurt is like, and we love it. We do. As far as the routine and the non-boredom and the living life to live life, for example, needing to get wood for the wood stove or the compost bucket, the compost bucket or meals even cooking on the wood stove, we experienced that a couple times now. Easy, fun, nice. We've been reading a lot more, we've been more creative, we've been rearranging the year and suiting us how we want to live. We've been sleeping a lot better. Great. Really great. It's kind of like that feeling if you go camping and you work throughout the day and at the end of the day you are ready for bed and you sleep great and we do get up in the middle of the night go to the bathroom and put some wood in the fire but we're back out almost immediately once we lay back down it's definitely the lifestyle that you're supposed to be living you're supposed to feel tired and ready for bed at night and, and worked worked sore new muscles yeah we've been getting more fit and healthier just in this one week we can tell a difference i didn't check my weight beforehand but i wish i had because next time i check it i don't even need to check it i can already tell that i dropped more weight definitely getting more healthy getting up earlier in the morning rising with the sun rather than sleeping in going um, to bed earlier As far as the creativity and the motivation through the roof, um, once you start doing those things you need to live by, it also makes you do other things because you're so used to keeping busy and living and you, you look for the next thing to do automatically. Where in normal society, a lot of people get distracted by all those fancy things you Screens. work for and buy. That's a screen time in the other life. It almost seems as if those things were literally actually handcuffs to expanding and oneself and living. So it's interesting. We knew it all along. We hadn't had a TV in years, hadn't had cable in even longer. And just taking that step helped us to come to this step. So get rid of your TVs. It'll help you in the long run. For sure. Definitely a more fulfilling life, more peaceful life, a less stressful life, more healthy life, and more connective life. For sure. Since we're all living in this round circle together, we our lives are completely intertwined now. There's no like segregating when the kids go in their room or when we go in the kitchen, you know, now we're all connected. We're all talking to each other. We're all just living together, more connected. It's a really wonderful feeling. And it is. Yeah. That's another thing in today's society that <clears throat> they tend to want you to get away from is the connectiveness to your family and others and even yourself. And like Jen said, living this style of life you're definitely connected with yourself with your family with nature with the universe so we had a nice little get together with some family members and they loved it yep yeah, they loved it and they said it was really homey and and that was even at night when we don't have electricity and they still thought it was nice and you know instead of sitting around the tv or what probably most people do that 
we got a, our instruments out and we all did a little drum circle, drums and tambourines and harmonica. Hung, had tea around the table all yeah. together and hung out and talked about real things. It was nice and I'm sure it was really a nice experience for them as well. Right. And just hearing the nature here is a wonderful feeling. Hearing the rain in the yurt. The wind. We'll have to get that on video for you. The rain is just a wonderful. Yeah. The smallest little sprinkle sounds like, well, you'll see sooner or later, mm -hmm. but it's amazing. We haven't heard a really, really rain, loud rainstorm yet, but uh, it should be interesting. So overall, great week. We're, you know, getting our routines down, becoming more familiar with what we need to do, and it's only going to become easier, and I can't wait to see what happens in the next month. For sure. So we want to show you a little bit what we did, because while we've been here for a week, we've been changing it around to suit us a little bit better. So we'll take, give you a little quick tour of the yurt. All right, I'm standing at the front French door here. We still need to work on our front entrance. It's about three feet off the ground where our door is. So right now we just have a makeshift entrance. That will be a project in the future. We have been keeping our food in cooler bags and in tubs outside of the front door in the cold. It works well. Everything's been staying cold and at night when it freezes, sometimes we bring it in and keep it right by our front door here. This door panel does stay pretty cool, so we keep our water and some of our food here. And we built our bathroom. Would you like to show us the bathroom? Come on, check it out. So I guess we'll go around the outside first. Okay. So... Got a little bookshelf here. Bookshelf Big that bookshelf. works as a wall. Works as a wall. $35, antique store. We brought some of our plants over, make it feel more homey. This is just another little storage cabinet used as another wall. And then a door that was actually sent to us broken by the yurt company, so we refurbished it and used it as a wall. We also put that there to allow the sun into the bathroom. Take you around the other side here. It's a louver door that came from Flowing River's grandparents. You simply attached it to the wall. Now we have a door to our bathroom. And behind the door, there's a coat rack used as a, or I used a climbing rope and just it's strung throughout the yurt so we can put up sheets as a little bit of blocking walls, visual walls, as well as light block for the nighttime. Made the kids little uh, hangers as well because they couldn't reach. As I turn around here, we see the makeshift bathroom. I plan to make a toilet bench with an opening top and you, it'll be able to store all of the sawdust and extra bucket as well as the compost bucket and give it a nice wooden vintage touch. Plenty of room in there. Do what we need to do. There's no shower in there. We are using other places for showering right now. Family members and eventually in the summer we'll do an outdoor shower. But you can get by with a little amount. So I already talked about the bookshelf a little bit, but we'll go into it a little further. It also has a wall, adds you know storage and throw your books on there and it looks good because it's tucked off into the corner and you can't really tell that it's a bathroom. Before we tell people, they don't even realize that it is a bathroom. So that's kind of cool in itself. And it doesn't smell like a bathroom in here. 
There's no right. smell from our composting toilet. You don't have to worry about that at all. With the composting toilet and the sawdust as an activator, it keeps the smell and soaks up the moisture and doesn't allow for odor or anything like that. Um, we scroll around, you see our bed, which is just simply an air mattress with a organic futon mattress on top of it. For now. For now. We kind of like it. A tapestry in the background just as a headboard and a little bit of uh, visual ambiance, I guess. Simple little table. We started moving our house plants over. These are actually avocado trees. Upstate New York avocado trees. They look great for first week of December. So as you can see, uh, we don't have any lights on in here and you can see it's plenty bright. No need for lights during the day for sure. Even on cloudy dark rainy. days, rainy days that we've been here, still no need for lights. Even with these windows shut down, the dome gives off so much light that it's just amazing. Witch's Ball, to keep away bad spirits. This has been with Flowing River for a long time, one of her favorite items. So she had to hang, hang that up. Yes, I love my Witch's Ball. One of our three guitars. We plan to get them all over here soon and hang them up. Um, I build little uh, guitar hangers, so I'm going to make a couple more, and then we'll be able to display them without the cases. I think it'll look really nice in here. Little advent calendar for a little bit of holiday cheer. We don't, we're not big into the uh, holiday, Christmassy, you know, type thing. Uh, it's just become too consumerism, and we're not really into that. So. We do an advent calendar for the kids, and we call it Santa Mouse, and each day that comes, we put a little note in the calendar of what we're going to do or where we're going to go. Uh, we saw a nutcracker at Proctor's Theater the other day, we went roller skating, we had a surprise sleepover at Grandma's, uh, tons of stuff like that. Kids get excited every day to change it and see what's new, and they really love it. Onto our wood stove, coming along beautifully. Um, I think we might have already told you we bought the backboard, but I'll just mention that again. Bought the backboard, the ground was getting a little hot behind it, so I put up a little piece of flashing that was left over from the chimney. chimney. We got our little blow fan going, the Sterling engine fan. It's barely going right now because the fire's just coals. We're about to leave for a little while, so let it get down to just a few coals and then load it up. And by the time we get back, you know, it takes probably an hour for it to really start burning and a couple hours after that to go down. Um, we used our little tub here as a wood box. It's empty right now. Before we leave, we plan on filling it. A little more holiday cheer with the snowman on the door holder there. Um, while we're right here, I'll just show you some of the cordage that I was talking about. We hang our lights on here, our solar lights on here, and point them upwards, and it really lights it up nice at night. Um, S-hooks come in great. You can hang anything on there if you want to warm up a piece of clothing, or as I said, put a big tapestry across it and make some little blockage or light blockage. It's strung around here and goes back and shoots the other way and these are the tapestries to block the kids' beds slash bedrooms. So we'll just roll that back. This is what we normally do during the day or whenever they want to roll them back but these are the kids' privacy pops they're called. They're working great they, as you can imagine, they hold the heat really well because the heat absorbs inside and the air inside doesn't move around and it really makes it really nice and toasty. And over against the wall with the colder side, we kind of want that. They're not going to like that I'm showing you inside here, but <laughs> take a quick look. And there's plenty of room in these pockets here 
for they have lights, they have books, books the they back. have a couple little toys. Um, they have a little hanger here where they hang their lanterns and can read in the night or the morning. And they really enjoy these. Uh, it gives them a little private space if they just want to get away from each other, each other or, or us. us. Or yeah. Just simply just, read or take time. Yeah. So they're really working out great. And we did do a little closet area behind the tapestry down here. Just simple, still using that same rope. Hung two lines. You can't see it, so it's not an eyesore or anything. And a little room for changing. We'll pop out this way into the kitchen. So here's our kitchen for now. We originally had it over by the windows because we thought we would need the light, but as I mentioned before, light is everywhere in here. So we decided that it would be better off instead of having the food over by the wood stove that we move it to the farthest point from the wood stove. Instead of the temps and the food going up and down, up and down, up and down with the heat, staying relatively same temperature, so it'll do a lot better. Simply hung the pans and hangers on the cable that connects it all. Have a little shelf with some food amenities. Nice. Still working on a sink. That'll be one of the next steps is getting a sink in here. At least a uh, sink that'll drain into a five gallon bucket. Something to wash hands or wash dishes. Like I said, we're still in the first week. So more things to come. Keep tuned. Uh, got a little table in here that's extendable with two leaves that are about 12 to 14 inches long. Nice card tape card table covered up with a tapestry to give it a little flair. Mm -hmm. Some chairs. Store some stuff underneath there. Store some there. stuff under there. We've got some some of our plates and plates and bowls and pots and utensils. And our boot tray. We're gonna be working on getting some rugs in here. So this is two king or two Two box springs that were meant for a king size bed. So they're about three feet by eight feet. And we have two of them, so we use the bottom under there for storage. I have a bunch of 10 foot long boards and like a 14 foot long board and a outdoor cook stove and a radio and some pots and other boxes. And it's plenty of storage for everything we need that want to nice hide it out of the way as well. So one of my favorite things, and I think everybody's favorite things that we added just recently, was these solar string lights. Uh, they string all the way around the top of the yurt. We keep them on at night. We're just having them on right now to show you. Um, they give it a really nice homey feeling in here. And at night, you can really feel the roundness instead of not being able to see all the parts of the year. And they seem to hold their charge really well. So I'm really liking these solar lights. Just kidding. Thank you for watching. Um, comment, question below. Uh, feel free to ask anything. We probably only talked about you know, half of what we could have, and the experience has been amazing. So, if you're into it, check it out. We and, encourage it. Right. It's great, cheap, no mortgage. It will change your life for the better, for sure. If you're yes. thinking about it, if you're on the fence, take the leap. It's well worth it. Um, if you're worried about any financial or what's going to go on in the future, don't. Now is the time. 
now is all you have. Now is what you should be worrying about. If you're not happy, get happy. And you can do it yourself. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for monthly updates on our living experience here in the yurt and all our other updates and all the other things we do and tons of videos coming. And if you could do us a big favor, please like and subscribe and share. Now that we're uh, living homesteading, we're trying to uh, do this YouTube thing and get a little help from that as well. So that would be greatly appreciated. And spread what we're learning. Right, right. On top of it and try to get others to do the same. So thank you. Take care. Peace. Peace.